cover in the comforts of your home. 912-916-9195. That's CHSGA Home Health. Totally transparent car buying. With Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC live market pricing, know for certain you're buying at the low market price. We constantly monitor multiple auto and competitor websites to always offer the most aggressive market prices. No games, no gimmicks, no kidding. That's why Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC is the home of the no-hassle deal. Skip the runaround and discover the difference of truly transparent buying on every new and pre-owned vehicle every day. We're online just like you, and we continuously scan pricing on hundreds of vehicles to update prices in real time. At Neesmith Chevrolet Buick GMC, know for certain that our live market price is the low market price. Experience a new and totally transparent way to buy with live market pricing. Chevy, find new roads. The New Year celebration is over, but the bills from last year keep coming in. Consolidate those bills into one monthly payment that fits your budget with help from the friendly Franklin folks. Visit us at 1074 North Macon Street or call us at 912-427-4237 or you can apply online at 1FSC.com. All loans subject to our liberal credit policy and limitations, if any. First Franklin Financial Corporation, MNLSR number 141654, Georgia Residential Mortgage License number 5656, licensed by the Mississippi Department of Banking and Consumer Finance. Morton Collision is located at 1320 West Pine Street in Jessup. Morton's offers free estimates, 23-hour towing, and they guarantee their work. Call 427-3769 or after hours, 912-294-6140. The staff at Morton Collision Center works with all insurance companies. So for guaranteed work with a qualified staff, go to Morton Collision at 1320 West Pine Street in Jessup. Morton Collision, quality you can see. Local news on WIFO. It's time now for a look latest in local news. In the news, 27-year-old Christopher Clayton Sweat remains in custody, charged with attempted murder, while his victim, 35-year-old Winter Thrift, remains at Memorial Medical Center in Savannah, receiving treatment for injuries as on Sunday morning, Sweat cut her throat and left her for dead in a wooded area on Mallard Road. Law enforcement used tear gas to force Sweat out of the camper that he was hiding in at Fanny Head Road. For more on Sunday's events, we talked Monday with Wayne County Sheriff John Carter. Well, I was leaving the other scene. Uh, going to uh, another location when uh, uh, we got word that he was at an address off of Fanny Head Road. And uh, we had two deputies that, that had already arrived and confirmed that uh, uh, there were people at the residence that we thought he may be at. We weren't sure it was him just yet. But uh, anyway, we all got, got on scene and confirmed it was him. Uh, we called out our tactical team. Uh, Chief Doug Lewis was on scene. He called out some of his uh, uh, captains. Uh, I think we had uh, Captain Lane and uh, Captain Reddish and, and Captain Morgan came. He's a hostage negotiator. So we tried to make contact with him by phone. We were un- unable to do that, so he was trying to talk to him on the PA. We never were able to establish a conversation with him. How soon did he let the two people in the camper out? Did he know the two people in the camper? Is that why he went there? Uh, apparently he did, but I don't think they knew exactly what, what was involved. But we also found the, the vehicle that he stole there that he had painted, with spray painted it black and put a different license plate on it. Uh, I don't know if his plan was to, to try to leave, go out of state or what, but uh, that's what we found there. It was probably, actually your other question, They it was probably 30 to 45, maybe even an hour after we were there on scene before they came out. And I don't know if he was holding them, but, you know, they confirmed that he did have a weapon uh, and some other things, of course, that we're still interviewing them and getting more information that we can. Remember, this thing went on for three and a half hours again. The tear About gas, three hours. I've been to several of those incidents where tear gas used. I understand you just can't stay in with that. I understand well, we, powerful stuff. We, uh, of course, we cut the water supply off and cut the power off. After the uh, tactical team got there, they were able to, with their shields, because where the power cut off, it was pretty close proximity to uh, to the camp he was in. We didn't want anybody hurt. Uh, you know, of course, obviously that was our goal, not to hurt him or, or get any of our people hurt. We got our MRAP, which is our armored vehicle. Uh, they they came in and they bumped the trailer trying to, we didn't know if he, because we knew he was on drugs, because the, the people that came out told us he was. Yeah. 
Uh, we didn't know if he maybe had passed out or, or, or what. So we uh, we bumped the camper a couple of times uh, and then uh, fired tear gas through the front window. Uh, I mean, we had time on our side, so we were trying to wait, but it was getting, you know, as the weather started deteriorating, it was going to be, it was getting close to dark. It was going to be a, a tougher situation for us, so we made the decision to try to deploy gas and see if we could get him out that way. Uh, they were able to deploy one uh, uh, one canister with the launcher from from the uh, MRAP vehicle. The other one, they had to take their shields and go to the end and manually bust that wind out and throw the other. But the second canister, he came out. Going back to the first thing, when did the first call come in? This all occurred early Sunday morning. Uh, I understand she was able to regain consciousness and seek help. Did she call somebody or did she call? Uh, we were called. I'm not sure exactly where the 911 call came from, but we were dispatched about eight eight o'clock. But I think the incident happened way earlier in the morning than that because he had to have time to do all this painting and, and other stuff. So I, I'm not sure of the timeline there yet and uh, until we can get a chance to talk to her. Like I said, she was heavily medicated. Uh, we were able to get some information before you know she became where she couldn't, you know, where we could talk to her before they sent her to Savannah. Nobody stated how serious are the injuries, how bad was the, and did he cut her with a knife or what did he use? Uh, I, we believe it to be a knife. Uh, and it, it was uh, the throat and how far, uh, how deep it was. Uh, obviously it didn't hit the carotid or jugular vein or she'd still be out here on that wood pile. But, uh, you know, it, uh, I, I can't answer a medical condition. Now, like I say, she went to a memorial in Savannah, so we don't we don't know the condition right now. And the final question you were asking, what, what, did they have a relationship? Did he know? I guess he obviously knew the girl, but did they did they date or what's the relationship? Obviously you know? they knew each other. I don't have enough information yet. Uh, like I said, I haven't. We we've been extremely busy, so I've, I haven't. Uh, all my investigators, uh, uh, we kept two in reserve for any other crimes that may happen. But the rest of them were were helping us with this. Uh, my chief investigator and three more were were involved in this particular uh, instance. So uh, I don't have that information yet. To, as we continue to, and it unfolds, we we should have more information today. And of course, uh, if you've got the charges and all, there may be some more charges. Um, you know, we, as it uh, progresses, as the investigation progresses, we'll we'll see uh, how many charges and, and what they may be. I appreciate it, and we will stay in touch with you. And again, those comments, Sheriff John Carter. Again, Christopher Clayton Swade charged with criminal attempt to commit murder, two counts of aggravated assault and theft of motor vehicle. At this point, other charges pending. Swade stole through his vehicle, which is a white 2004 GMC extended cab pickup truck. Trish was able to regain consciousness Sunday morning, made it to a neighbor's house who called 911. Again, we'll continue to follow the story as it develops. We'll be back with more news as this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages. So please stay tuned. The Trademark at 3689 Savannah Highway has been serving Wayne County and surrounding counties for over 30 years. If it's a small hand tool you're looking for or a 30-ton bearing press, we've got it. You need a tarp? We've got you covered. We have any size you need, from a 5x7 to a 30x60. So if you need a quality tool at an affordable price, come see us at the Trademark, 3689 Savannah Highway, or call us at 427-6966. That's 427-6966. The Trademark, the tool supply place. When further treatment is no longer an option, hospice can provide services to manage symptoms and difficulties caused by illness. Emotional, psychosocial, and spiritual care, as well as support to the families and caregivers, are all part of hospice care. Hospice of South Georgia has been a part of the health community in Wayne and surrounding counties for over 13 years. The professional yet compassionate attention provided by our staff is unsurpassed. Widely supported by donations from the local population, Hospice of South Georgia is the only nonprofit hospice in Wayne County. Our new administrative offices, located at 1625 Sunset Boulevard, have opened recently as Phase 1 of our building project. Hospice of South Georgia accepts anyone who meets hospice criteria, regardless of their ability to pay. Please call 912-588-0080 to speak to someone about hospice care. That was 912-588-0080. We are your hometown hospice, and we are here to serve you. Hospice of South Georgia, working to add life to your days. Are you wanting a fresh look in your kitchen, but afraid of the time and money it will take to get the look you've always dreamed of? Do you find yourself watching home remodeling shows and wanting that new look in your home as well? Well, at Kitchen Tune-Up, let us remodel your expectations. At Kitchen Tune-Up, we can give you a fresh, updated look in your kitchen in less than three days. We can reface or redoor your existing cabinets, or let us redesign your kitchen with all new cabinets and countertops. Kitchen Tune-Up is located inside your Sears hometown store in Jessup, servicing all of southeast Georgia. 
Visit us at kitchentuneup.com or call us a day for a free estimate at 912-424-8907. Wayne County Superior Court in session this week on Monday, 61-year-old Steve Bonham pled guilty to two counts of aggravated assault and received a 40-year sentence with the first 20 to be served in prison and the following 20 to be served on probation. Bonham pled guilty to assaulting Jerry Clemens back on the 17th day of November 2016. One count of aggravated assault was raising a baseball bat in a manner in which the said victim believed she would be struck. The second count intentionally dosing Jerry Clemens with gasoline and pushing her into an open fire, causing bodily injury and seriously disfiguring her body. Superior Court Judge Stephen Kelly handed down a sentence on Monday afternoon in Wayne County Superior Court, getting a 40-year sentence, its first 20 to be served in prison. Today, jury selection will continue for the case of the state of Georgia versus Timmy Pye, who's charged with rape. The alleged incident occurred back on March 25th of 2017. Jury selection began Monday morning, but after the first panel, many were excused for various reasons. So a second panel had to be questioned late yesterday afternoon, and they'll continue that today. And the jury will be struck today, and the case will get underway sometime today as well. And Timmy Pye into a jury trial charged with rape. He's represented by Attorney Joe Phelps, the prosecutor's assistant DA, Marilyn Bennett, and WFL family will continue to follow the court proceedings and have reports here on our local newscast. 2018 is an election year. Wayne County is going to see races locally for both the school board and the county commission. Qualifying takes place beginning at 9 a.m. March 5th, ends at 12 noon on March the 9th. General primary election and nonpartisan general election will be held on May 22nd, with the general election to be held on November the 6th. Qualifying fee to run for a county commission seat is $54. Qualifying fee to run for a school board seat is $100. Statewide races include a run for governor. And Lieutenant Governor and Secretary of State, to name just a few, it's all state offices referee election. Also on the ballot in November will be the East Bloss for education this year. Again, the county had their Bloss passed last November. The school board looking to pass an East Bloss for education this November. That will be on the ballot in November as well. Again, locally the voters will decide who will serve on the school board and the county commission for the next four years. We'll come back with some final news notes after this word from our sponsor, the commercial messages. So please stay tuned. The Trademark at 3689 Savannah Highway has been serving Wayne County and surrounding counties for over 30 years. If it's a small hand tool you're looking for or a 30-ton bearing press, we've got it. You need a tarp? We've got you covered. We have any size you need, from a 5x7 to a 30x60. So if you need a quality tool at an affordable price, come see us at the Trademark, 3689 Savannah Highway, or call us at 427-6966. That's 427-6966. The Trademark, the tool supply place. You know Harris Ace Hardware has everything you need for your building and home repair projects. But did you know Harris Ace Hardware carries a wide assortment of air filters for your home or office? They can even special order. Harris Ace is your hometown Yeti dealer. Plus, they carry Coastal Damar and Calcutta sunglasses. And check with Harris Ace for all your painting needs. Harris Ace will not be beat on price and will match any competitor's price. The helpful place, Harris Ace Hardware in Jesta, Bologna, and Hinesville. We are having a great day at CHSGA Home Health. We know there's no place like home when recovering from an illness or surgery. CHSGA Home Health provides the compassionate care and services you or a loved one is in need of. Our services include skilled nursing, physical, occupational, speech therapy, and IV medication therapy. CHSGA Home Health has multiple disease management programs designed to meet your individual needs. Give us a call to hear more about how we can help you to have a great day as you recover in the comforts of your home. 912-916-9195. That's CHSGA. GA Home Health. Final notes of news. Wayne County Chamber of Commerce inviting everyone to their quarterly membership luncheon, which will focus on the state of education here locally. Guest speakers will be School Superintendent Dr. Jay Brinson and Dr. Glenn Dybert of Coastal Pines Technical College. Date Thursday, February 8th from 1130 a.m. to 1 p.m. at the Paul Scott Polytech Building. Need more information? Simply contact the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce at 427-2028. The day before that, Wednesday, February 7th, Chamber hosting an event entitled Improve Your Cash Flow, Finding the Hidden Cash in Your Business. Feature speaker will be David Lewis from the UGA Small Business Development Center. This event also being held at the Paul Scott Polytech Building at Coastal Pines Technical College. Tickets are $20 for chamber members, $30 for guests. The chamber asks that you RSVP by 12 noon on February the 5th. Session focus on how to identify areas of your business that are holding hidden cash, how to create and implement strategies that will improve your cash position, and determine an actionable list of ways to improve profits and cash flow specific to their operation. And they ask that your RSVP by 12 noon on February the 5th, and the number to call, 427-2028. Again, the Wayne County Chamber of Commerce having two events, Wednesday, February 7th, and their quarterly membership luncheon on Thursday, February the 8th. Finally, in the news... 
On February 20th from 6 to 7 p.m., Martha Williams Middle School will host a parent event. Come experience the Georgia Milestones assessment by participating in or watching a friendly game or of competition. Shows that you're smarter than a 6th, 7th, or 8th grader. Learn what you can do to prepare your child for the Georgia Milestones assessment. Tips, strategies, study guides, and other helpful resources will be available. The class will be the class with the most parent participation will win an afternoon of fun, games, and treats. Again, that's set for February 20th from 6 to 7 p.m. at Arthur Williams Middle School. That's going to do it for the latest in local news. Sports comes your way in a few minutes. Bob Morgan saying have a great day.